morning. Welcome everybody. My name is Ellie Burns. I am the Director of Nonprofit Relations with the Community Foundation. Really excited to have you all join us today to learn a little more about Four Impact Leaders. So um, Four Impact Leaders has been developed in response to the need that we've heard in the community um, to create a leadership program Sorry, I'm trying to let people in as I talk, so be patient with me. Thank you. Um, it's a leadership program that's specifically designed for nonprofit professionals who've committed to advancing their careers in the nonprofit sector. So we all know how common it is for nonprofit leaders to potentially start as a direct service provider and then move along through the organization, potentially finding themselves in a leadership role without formal training as to what does a nonprofit leader look like, or maybe what are their personal strengths and um, opportunities as a leader. Many organizations don't necessarily have the capacity, whether it's the time or the resources to provide this training to their staff. And some leaders might take it upon themselves to learn these things while others may leave the role or even the sector. So our hope is that this nine month cohort opportunity will not only fill in the gaps organizations can't fill, but also help to build a network of nonprofit professionals who can provide peer support long after the nine months are over. So I'm gonna go through a variety of, um, of slides today that talk about the four impact um, program. I would welcome you that if you'd like to put questions in the chat or um, go ahead and unmute and ask questions. We'd be happy to, um, to, to take them as we come. Otherwise, we'll try to have some time at the end to address them. So before I get too in-depth here, I wanted to say a huge thank you to the Four Impact Advisory Committee. Um, when we decided to start thinking about Four Impact leaders, we knew that we couldn't just create this program in a silo. So the Advisory Committee has been assisting what this will look like throughout the past, I want to say about nine months. Um, these are a variety of voices from the community that have come together to ensure that we're providing the most comprehensive program possible and that we meet the needs of the sector. So we've got Andrea Wright, who is the Regional Philanthropy Officer with the American Red Cross, Dylan DeClerc, who is the co-founder of Can Play, Cynthia Leitchum, who's the Executive Director of Anawim, Joe Banesh, the president and CEO of the Ingenuity Company, Mia Ellis, an executive coach with Amplify Leaders, Christine Herr, the executive director of ArtForce Iowa, Joy Esposito, who is the assistant director at the Evelyn K. Davis Center for Working Families, Tony Tim, the executive director of the Boys and Girls Club of Central Iowa, and Matt McIver, the artistic director at the Iowa Stage Theater Company. So again, a huge thanks to these fantastic partners in this work, and we couldn't have done it without them. And their work's not done either. <laughs> so today I'm gonna talk about the who, what, why, when, how of the Four Impact Leaders Program. So we'll go through these one at a time. And as I mentioned, um, feel free to pop in if you have questions, or we'll definitely have questions at the end. So when we think about the who, who is this program for? Um, we hope to identify 12 to 16 for impact leaders, and they will be selected to participate in the 2023 cohort. We also plan to identify two alternatives in case one of the selected participants is unable to participate. So we are looking for current full-time nonprofit employees within the greater Des Moines area who have three or more years of experience in the nonprofit sector, have future areas of influence in their organization, are committed to their own professional leadership, leadership journey, have the bandwidth for and interest in expanding their skill set around purpose-driven leadership, value the importance of developing a strong network of colleagues, and have the support of their immediate supervisor, um, ED, CEO, or if they're in that role, their board chair, to fully participate in the experience. Attendance at the nine months will be mandatory, and we really think it's imperative that the applicants have a sincere conversation with their ED, CEO, or president, or again, if they're in that role, their board chair, to just ensure that they have the full support of their organization's leadership. 
when we talk about the what of the cohort, you know, I've provided a little bit of insight at the beginning, but getting into the details of what the cohort really is, it's a nine month cohort of nonprofit professionals that are dedicated in their leadership competencies. Um, we want them to be focused on the development engaged and all knowledgeable leaders within the greater Des Moines community. This is going to be an individualized learning experience and it will provide personal development that can be translated into leading purpose driven work. And finally, it's an opportunity to develop collaborative relationships and learn from colleagues across the sector. We've been really purposeful in referring to the four impact leaders program as a cohort program because we feel that the collaborative relationships that will be developed as a result of participation are a key component to the effectiveness of the, of the experience and the program. So a little more about the what, the question that I'm sure everybody always is curious about um, is the cost. The full cost to participate in the program is $2,000, but we are so thankful for a generous. We have the belief that investing in the nonprofit sector leadership is a priority. So we've been able to lower the tuition cost to participants to $250 a person. This fee will include all materials, books, resources, meals, experiences that you have, there's a mentoring piece, so that will also be included, as well as the different facilitators that come in um, for the program. There are scholarships available for individuals who might see the $250 as a financial barrier to participation. We definitely don't want that to be the case. So um, when you complete the application, you just fill out an additional portion of the application that would allow you to be considered for a scholarship. So finally, when we think about the what, um, we've been you know, working with the advisory committee to spend a lot of time determining the curriculum for the experience. And it's still a work in progress. Our goal is to be flexible enough that we can respond to the needs of the group while covering the topics that we know are critical to a leader's, a leader's success. So personal leadership, executive leadership, influence and advocacy, nonprofit strategy, assessment and evaluation, resource development, communication, and dynamics problem solving are tentatively the overarching themes for the nine months. The sessions will be presented by a variety of current nonprofit leaders, consultants, and professionals in the for-profit sector, the nonprofit sector, and more. An additional piece that we have to the program that I'm really excited about is called Leading Leaders. So this is a monthly opportunity for the participants to connect with current leaders in the nonprofit sector. We've identified four current leading leaders who would be able to speak to the experience of moving through the leadership ladder and have been identified to provide mentoring throughout the cohort. Um, so participants in this cohort will have the opportunity to build relationships with each other, but also with a variety of respected professionals that are doing amazing work in this community. So now I want to think about why. Why might you be interested in determining whether or not this experience is right for you? So four, four impact leaders will help participants build confidence in their personal leadership abilities, awareness of their competencies as a purpose-driven leader, strategies for tactical organizational leadership, and a deeper relationship with their fellow nonprofit leaders. You know, this experience will enhance both the individual leader and the entire nonprofit community. Participation in this program will help develop the most vibrant, healthy community in nonprofit sector in, in Des Moines, including a community of leaders and colleagues who collaborate, celebrate, and support one another. When we talk about the when, there's a couple of key dates you'll want to know. The application is actually currently available on the Community Foundation's website. Um, it is under the nonprofit resources link. There's a four impact leaders page there that gives a variety of the information I'm covering today. It will also have a recording of today's session and the application is available there. The applications are due on Friday, September 23rd by noon. 
and we will invite participants to participate um, by October 14th. We will also ident um, identify those two alternates by that date. And we just ask that participants would respond with their commitment within one week of that date so that we can let the alternatives know if there's been a spot that's opened up. We'll kick off the cohort with a social on Tuesday, December 6th here at the Community Foundation from five. We start to understand what is this program. And then the cohort will meet the fourth Tuesday of each month from 8.30 to four. And those dates are listed. Um, we're hoping that the location will be at the Community Foundation C3 Center. So consistent location throughout the nine months. Um, so there's, there's some high overview of important dates that you're going to want to know as you're considering um, applying to participate and then what that would look like during your January to September of 2023. So the application, again, the application, all materials will need to be uploaded by September 23rd at noon. Um, the application is a form on our website, available on our website. And in addition to a variety of questions about you and your time in the organization and in the sector, there are a few um, open-ended questions that we would invite you to address. We've said, please don't exceed a thousand words only to give you some parameters that we don't necessarily need a dissertation or a long-winded essay. Um, we want you to just make sure that you can address these questions in a you know, concise and, and quick manner. Um, the, com the committee is really going to look through these questions to see participants who can clearly communicate, have leadership potential, will bring a collaborative attitude, and are just open to learn. In addition to the questions that the applicant um, will answer and that they'll upload that document, we also ask that you would upload a letter of support from your ED, president, CEO, or again, if you're in that role from your board chair. This just, you know, I, I mentioned earlier that attendance is mandatory. So this is just a um, important way to confirm that you communicated your interest with your organization's leadership and then in turn, they're giving you their full support to participate. The advisory committee will review all of the applications and make a decision about the 12 to 16 participants and the alternatives. And we're looking at a criteria and service sector criteria. So we're looking at things like age, race, years in the sector, and applicants ability to communicate their leadership potential, collaborative attitude, and their willingness to learn. That's what we're really thinking about when we look at individual criteria. And we wanna have the most diverse cohort representation possible to really give us feedback on our program and is this the right program for the community and are we addressing the right things in the program? When we think about organizational criteria, we're referencing a diverse representation of organization staff and budget size, um, considering an organization's capacity to support the participants in this journey. And then when we're thinking about service sector criteria, we just want to make sure that we're including voices and not up among the nonprofit community. So we would like to see a variety of different focus areas um, represented in, in the different organizations that our participants are, are members of. Um, again, the advisory committee will utilize a rubric to help determine the best cohort of participants. So I have talked a lot and covered a lot of information, including who would be a good fit for the nonprofit, um, for impact, uh, what it really is, why you might find when, you know, the application is available now, the due date is September 24th, and we will let participants know October 14th, and we'll hold a kickoff December 6th, and then how. Um, first of all, make sure that you have support from your ED, um, president, CEO, or your board chair, and or your board chair and then uh, complete all the application and supplemental materials, um, which are again available on our website. So uh, it was a lot of information and I appreciate your patience and time and I would definitely be happy to open it up to any questions that you might have right now. Hi, Ellie, can I ask a question? Um, I was curious, uh, There's you're talking about a lot of uh, training and a lot of interaction and mutual support among the members of this cohort. Where do you see those members then going as this moves forward? Uh, what would those 
uh, participants in this initial cohort be looking ahead to in terms of how they can bring those skills not only to their own organization, but then beyond that initial year? Yeah, that's a great question and something that's still kind of a work in progress, but we would definitely hope that the cohort participants could continue to um, potentially meet in some fashion. Uh, one of the things that we're hoping with the C3 Center is to have some opportunities for just collaborative conversations in that space. And so I would hope that we could bring the cohort participants together to have some um, ongoing discussions, you know, with each other and um, with future you know, alums of the program too. Um, I guess one thing that that leads me to say, Scott, too, that I didn't mention is that we're really hoping that the participants in this program are invested in a long-term career in the sector. And so as they continue to grow as leaders and they continue to um, be in the sector, we're just hoping that they can maybe give back maybe someday as a leading leader um, or just really be that voice in the community that you know um, can carry on the, the learning that they've had from this program. Thank you. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Great question. Uh, I also saw that somebody asked if we could send the PowerPoint out. Yes, we can put this PowerPoint up on our website um, along with this recording. Great question. I just wanted to add one um, brief follow up to Scott to your question and, and call out um, again appreciation to the, the advisory board that has been um, providing insight in this work. Um, you know, the, the reason why we're so grateful for those faces that you saw on that initial screen was because these are individuals who are committed to, to the um, nonprofit sector, to the nonprofit sector as well. And I think you'll get a flavor throughout this experience of things that um, you know, many of them learned, um, things that they wish that maybe they would have learned throughout their experiences um, and things that they know are critically important for being a successful leader in the field. So um, hopefully that also you know, adds to sort of the practicality of the work um, from all of those folks moving up within organizations and really being dynamic leaders. So hopefully that gives another frame set. Yeah, thanks Angie, that's great. Well, I won't keep people. Um, I'm happy to stay on if you have additional questions and you want to hang out and chat. Otherwise, that is just the high level overview of four impact leaders that we're so excited to share today. We appreciate you all being here. Um, we would love to um, answer any questions that you might have today, or you're welcome to follow up with me. My contact information is on here afterwards. Um, and I did have one more question. Is there a max in the sector for participants. For example, if someone has a leader in the sector for five years, but feel they would benefit from additional training, would they still be eligible to participate? You know, we're really looking at that um, three to five year window, but I would say I, I wouldn't stop you. I wouldn't let that stop you from applying. I think um, we're just kind of trying to understand what we really want this um, program to look like for the participants. And as I said earlier, we're trying to really be flexible about that. So um, yeah, if you've been in the sector for over five years, but you're still on that leadership journey, I think you're more than welcome to participate or to apply to participate. Yeah, great question. Do you anticipate, like I know you set the topics that were pretty high level. Do you anticipate as you get further in, um, in this or will you give more detail about what will be covered under those? High level topics? Uh, yeah, so I'm, I have my internet cut out for just a second. So can you ask that one more time? I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I was just uh, asking so the topics that you said were pretty high level. Do you have any like more detail about what specific topics underneath that will be covered in the classes? Yeah, we do. We're working through a curriculum map right now. And so as we kind of get that finalized and um, narrow down, you know, who will be our participants and what they are going to help us identify as the objectives for the um, sessions that they'll offer. We will have that. It's not really ready quite yet. Um, still a work in progress. But yeah, I would say anybody that is selected as a participant will get that curriculum map, um, hopefully in October when they when they are selected. Um, if it's something that you're interested in having access to earlier, um, you could send me an email and I'd be happy to kind of give you some more details about it. Um, but it's still kind of a work in progress, right? One, one kind of example too, and, and please, please do reach out to Ellie, but you know, again, how, um, 
how this has really been developed with the advisory board is really focused on the experience of a nonprofit professional. And so, for example, in the leadership space, there will be conversation and um, relationships built around the you know, difference between governance and management and what that looks like and how that plays out in the terms uh, or in, in sort of leadership conversation. So, uh, you know, it'll all have that flavor of the work of being in the sector um, as well. Thanks, Angie uh, and Ellie. Uh, I would just add that, um, you know, it's we're, we're learning and taking a step forward, right? So we're all going to learn a lot from this. Uh, this year, but it's going to be valuable input, I think, for us as much as the cohort uh, to share both directions and gain uh, knowledge of what maybe some gaps we didn't realize are in the community uh, and resources that we can connect to. But I would encourage people to send this as far and wide as you have contacts for and uh, have a robust uh, cohort to go through it so we can glean uh, the most information to support the most people in years after. So. Yeah, I totally agree. Thanks for that, Tony. All right. Well, please feel free to reach out if you do have any additional questions. Otherwise, um, like I said, this will all be available on our website. So we just really appreciate your time and joining us today and, and I'm excited to share this information with you. So have a great day, everybody.